It's not enough in life to be able to just go through every day as if we're going through the motions of living. Life is there for us to take a hold of and to make the most of. We make the most of life when we act wisely. And so we're doing this daily devotion so that we can grow in wisdom because wisdom truly is the answer. It holds the answer for everything, for every situation you might face in life. You want to become a wise person and here we are. We're into our 73rd Psalm. That's 73 days that we've been pursuing wisdom, growing wiser in the Word of God. You're 73 times wiser today than you were at the beginning of this year. That's going to count. That's going to count when you need it most. There's going to be times in the future where you'll be facing a situation. Right now, you might be he hearing something or learning something out of God's Word, and you might think, well, that's nice, pleasant thing to read about or to learn about, but you don't realize that that thing enters in and becomes part of your storehouse, the storehouse of wisdom, so that when the day comes where you're confronted with a particular situation, that enters into your conscious and filters through your spirit, picks up on the wisdom of God that is planted there and then enables you to act and choose and decide and to live wisely. You won't even realize that you're doing it at the time. It will just come as second nature. You'll just know what to do. You'll know what is the right way to go. And you'll know if you're going the wrong way, if you're heading in the wrong direction because of the storehouse of wisdom that you're gaining, that you're gathering, that you're building up during this time. So here we are at the 73rd Psalm. It's the beginning of the third book of the Psalms, the Leviticus Psalms, those Psalms that are dedicated primarily towards the house of God and towards our worship. I'm going to be reading from the message translation, verses 1 through to 5. <clears throat> no doubt about it, God is good. Good to good people, good to the good-hearted. But I nearly missed it. Nearly missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking at the people at the top, envying the wicked who have made it, who have it made who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the whole wide world. Don't tell me you haven't been there because all of us have been in the situation where we look at those who are wealthy or who are perhaps celebrities with admiration and we think, why have they got it so easy and yet I'm facing these tough times in life? Well, you need to begin with a little honesty. Asaph is the supreme psalmist. He's second only to David, and yet he humbly confesses his weaknesses. Look at his honesty. There are very few people in the world who are honest with themselves, let alone being honest with anybody else. But honesty is a prerequisite to receiving all the benefits of, of redemption. What did Asaph say? He said, I nearly missed it. I nearly missed the goodness of God because I was looking the other way, looking where God is not, looking at the vanity and the pageantry of the world, looking at all the vain things, looking at all the empty things that empty people try to fill up their empty lives with, to fool themselves into thinking that they have something and that they are somebody looking at all the people who are into vanity. There's no real joy there. You won't find God there. Don't find yourself looking the other way when God comes looking for you, looking to bring you real joy and real purpose and real life. Whenever we take our eyes off Jesus, the soul flounders and eventually falls. When we turn our eyes away from the light, we start looking at everything in the world askew. We get wonky vision. Everything gets distorted. 
We've got to avail ourselves of light or the light within us becomes darkness. So we have to avail ourselves continually of light. That's where worship comes in. Worship helps keep our eyes trained in the right direction, looking up instead of down. Worship keeps us in the light. Then in verse 17 of this psalm, it says, When I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood. There's a level of knowledge that your soul will find in the house of God that it won't find anywhere else. It's a secret wisdom. The world knows nothing of it. It's a mysterious wisdom that God teaches us through liturgy. That's through our worship through our fellowship and through the way Jesus is building his church brick upon brick and upon solid foundations. When I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood. Understanding is obtained in the house of God. Neglect the house of worship at your peril. So many Christians have lost their connection with the church. And I get why and I get how it happens, but in the process of protecting yourself from religious systems that have abused you, could you be limiting yourself? Could you be limiting your wisdom, your understanding, and therefore limiting your growth? Those who've wronged God's sheep will pay for what they've done. God's word assures us of that. In spite of the failure of the church, Jesus is still building his church. His church is a house of healing. It's a house of real understanding. Excuse me, my puppy is trying to chew the light. Uh, it's, a, it's a house of healing. It's a, it, it's a house where Jesus is building his people and placing people together and bringing them together so that they can genuinely become a house of healing, not a house of harm. May I appeal to you through this psalm that perhaps it's time that you were re-engaged with Jesus in his house. I know you can meet with Jesus on your knees beside your bed. I know you can meet with Jesus in your lounge room, but there's something that you'll get in the house of God that you won't find anywhere else. And I'm saying this primarily so that you can build up wisdom within yourself, so that you can find the wisdom of God and understanding. The house of God is a place of healing and it's a place of understanding. Maybe where you went to before wasn't the genuine house of God. Maybe it was just a bunch of people playing church. Maybe it was some guy thinking that he was the great guru. Maybe you need to re-engage with the real church, the church that Jesus is building. Well, that's what I hope for you. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow where we'll learn a little more wisdom out of the Word of God.